How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World always had a very difficult road ahead of it. This not only because it had to compete in a genre that quite honestly has become the home for most high class top tier Hollywood storytelling, but also because it had to show. Did you seriously use Wreck It Ralph 2 as an example? Ralph breaks the internet. Great storytelling. Agreed. Come on, Ray so Ballin into great you storytelling. To not leave not darkness. A couple videos back, I briefly mentioned how animated movies have become the center for high quality storytelling and brought up a few examples of it. One of these examples being Ralph Breaks the Internet. And very much to my surprise, some of you weren't really on board with this example. I say much to my surprise, not necessarily because I think everyone should love this movie, but because I truly genuinely do see it as a prime example of high quality storytelling. Just in of itself, I think Ralph Breaks the Internet is a strong film. It has funny jokes, it has quality voice acting, it has some very intricate visuals that must have been a pain in the butt to render. Plus, I also enjoyed the way it utilizes other Disney properties and how it in a very self-aware manner pokes fun at how some of them are pretty f***ed up. Were you poisoned? No. Cursed? No. Kidnapped or enslaved? No. Are you guys okay? Should I call the police? Then I have to assume you made a deal with an underwater sea witch where she took your voice in exchange for a pair of human legs? No. Good <gasps> lord. How would you <laughs> but even so, all of that is subjective, just my personal opinion. And so, the real reason I brought this movie up as an example of high quality storytelling isn't because of any of those things. The real reason I brought it up is because of how it handles one certain aspect of storytelling. The simply incredible, pretty much perfect way it handles character arc. I know I use the word perfect somewhat freely here because that's the name of the show, but if I could use it for its full effect just once, it would probably be now. Because what what Ralph Breaks the Internet does, every movie should feature some variation of. In essence, a character arc means the transformation that a character during the course of the narrative goes through, usually if done properly, from one extreme to another. A shy chemistry teacher becomes a hardened drug lord. An insignificant nobody becomes a world famous space wizard. Or in the case of Ralph Breaks the Internet, a clingy selfish companion becomes a true unselfish friend. But even though transformation is one crucial aspect of it, there is much more to the topic of character arcs than just simply making the protagonist change, as this movie proves. And so, let's do this. Let's go through Ralph Breaks the Internet and see how it builds its entire three-act narrative around the arc of its main protagonist. Let's see how you can use character arc in such a way that your movie works just magnificently even if it doesn't even have a proper villain. In other words, since it is my duty to teach and entertain you, get ready for the single most important movie video you'll ever see. In the first act, the very first thing that Ralph Breaks the Internet does is introduce who its main protagonist is, with a strong positive passion that defines them. A strong positive passion that also has a bit of a darker flawed side. Like I hinted at before, above all else, this movie is about the friendship between Ralph and Vanellope. And the positive passion that defines Ralph is his perpetual determination to be the best best friend to Vanellope that he possibly can. Whatever she wants, he wants to give her. When Whenever she feels bad, he wants to cheer her up. Overall, he wants nothing more than just to hang out with her and have a good time by doing the same old things, day after day after day. The problem is, Vanellope is beginning to be very different from Ralph. Unlike him, she doesn't want the same things day after day. She wants to be in a place where things are constantly new and exciting. And when Ralph hears about this, that's when we get our first glimpse of how his strong positive passion might be a bit too strong. To the point where there's a flawed negative side to it. Because now it becomes evident that he wants to be her best best friend so passionately that he's kinda insecure about it. Don't you ever wish something new and different would happen in your game? Nope. Really? Well, agree to disagree. Wait, I don't wanna disagree. No, no, it's just a fancy way to say we don't have to argue about it. We're arguing? I don't wanna argue! As a result, Ralph is now faced with a choice between two opposite paths. A positive healthy path and a negative unhealthy path. 
The healthy path means that he accepts and supports Penelope's aspirations to find a place where things are always new and exciting. It's gonna hurt because it essentially means that they can't hang out every day doing the same things anymore and that he no longer can be her best friend. But seeing as it is what she wants most, it would be the right thing to do. However, because the healthy path would mean that there is no movie, Ralph obviously gives in to the negative side of his passion and chooses the negative unhealthy path. Instead of supporting Penelope in her aspirations, to find a place where she feels like she belongs, Ralph tries to make her forget about all of it by convincing her that this place can be new and exciting as well. And so, being the best friend that he is, he goes into her racing game and illegally alters it by building a new exciting track just for her. But of course, since he's not exactly a professional track builder, it doesn't end very well. Get back up on the track, Swatty, you're going to lose! I can't! <laughs> What is wrong with this thing? Directly because of Ralph's choice and actions, the racing game breaks and gets unplugged, leaving all of its characters homeless. It's not what Ralph wanted to happen, but it is what he made happen. And therefore, in order to fix the game before it's too late, Ralph and Penelope set out on a journey to the internet to find the new part that they need. As in, they set out from the setup section of Act 1 into the main plot of Act 2. And the reason this is so effective and emotionally packed is because Ralph is the one that sets it all in motion. Not because he's an evil guy, but because his passion of being a great friend and doing good is so strong that he doesn't see how it actually has become his biggest flaw. And so, from here on out, there's always that highly effective underlying knowledge in the audience that if things don't work out, it's his fault. See? what I tell you? The single most important movie video you'll ever see. In the second act of this movie, as our heroes are trying to accomplish their main goal, we get to delve a bit deeper into the flawed side of the protagonist's passion and what it actually means. In order to get money to buy the steering wheel needed to fix the broken game, Ralph and Penelope wander into this dangerous GTA Online world, which really highlights the core differences between them. Penelope enjoys the excitement of the danger, Ralph doesn't. And when they meet this Shank character that Penelope instantly forms a friendly connection with, that's when it becomes very clear what Ralph's problem is. He's such a passionate friend that he's become clingy and easily jealous. He is Penelope's one and only best friend and he's not willing to share her with anyone else, even if that is what Penelope wants. So anyone that is too friendly with her automatically is a rival of his. Are you honestly telling me that Shank Lady wasn't the coolest person you ever met? Cool? Name one cool thing about her. Um, let's see. She looks cool, she talks cool, she drives cool. Shank is for real cool. Right? <laughs> she is not. I'm a cool one, getting all the hearts. Her hair is cool, her car is cool. After Ralph begins making viral videos for money, he and Penelope for the first time in the movie have to, for a brief moment, be apart. And due to his fearful reaction, we finally start to get an explanation for why why he has a problem of being a clingy friend. He still hasn't gone over the fact that he used to be hated by everyone because he was just a video game bad guy. He still is insecure about himself. He still needs validation from other people, something which Penelope all these years has given him. A great metaphor for this is when he's running around trying to force people to give more hearts to his videos. But for a brief moment, things actually seem to get better. Ralph's videos are loved by pretty much everybody and he starts to realize that maybe Maybe he'll be okay. Maybe he can be just fine even without Penelope always by his side. That is, until he accidentally stumbles into the comment section. Ralph's videos stink. stink. What? So stupid. So stupid. Ralph, Ralph is the worst. Is the worst. I hate him. I hate him. Ralph, I wish you die in real life and go to hell. Having seen the comments, Ralph discards all the personal growth he's made and reverts back to the same flawed, insecure man-child he was before. He tells himself that none of these people matter, that all he really needs is Penelope's validation. They have the money for the wheel now, so they'll just get it and head back home and things can go back to the way they were. Unfortunately, at this point, Penelope has realized that her purpose in life is not to go back home, but instead to stay in GTA Online world. That's where she belongs. And when Ralph hears about 
this, we arrive at the exact same situation we were in the beginning. Ralph once again has to make that same choice between the same two paths. The healthy path would mean that he supports Penelope and encourages her to stay where she feels she belongs. But since he has refused to grow and overcome his personal flaw, he denies that he has any kind of a problem and again chooses the unhealthy path. No, this can't be right. No, she's been brainwashed. That's what this is. Because the Vanellope I know would never abandon me like that. I gotta, I gotta get her out of there now. Being the best friend that he is, Ralph goes into the GTA world game and illegally alters it to convince Vanellope that she belongs back home with him. And as before, things go wrong and the game turns into actual GTA Online where nothing works and then the whole thing comes crashing down. As a result, Vanellope gets fed up with Ralph's clingy sh** and ends their friendship altogether, which leaves him defeated and once again wishing that he had taken the healthy path, because even though he had good intentions, all of this is his fault. Only this time, things are about to get much much worse, taking the plot from the second act to the high stakes of the third act. And only because of Ralph, because despite making the same mistake before and noticing that he does perhaps have a bit of a problem, he refused to grow as a person. See, again, most important movie video you've ever seen. Well, maybe it's a bit toxic and arrogant of me to say it like that. Or, nah, most important video ever made. No other YouTuber does what I do. Since the second act ends in the protagonist refusing to overcome their personal flaw, the third final act should be all about them having to face the extreme repercussions of it. And the reason this film is such a great example to use is because these consequences are very literal, like they take a literal physical form. Following the crash of GTA World, the virus that Ralph used to infect it now gets free and uses him to spread all across the internet in order to destroy the entire thing. Now things get so bad that even Ralph himself is forced to see that, okay, maybe he really does have a bit of a problem. It's me, your bestest friend in the whole wide world who you can't live without! Wow. From up here I can see how I do come across as needy and clingy and self-destructive like Nosemore said. Unfortunately, at this point, identification is no longer enough. It might have been enough at the start, but not anymore. The only way for Ralph to fix everything and make things right is to battle the direct consequences of his own personal flaw, which here takes the form of a gigantic version of him. And so he kicks and he punches and he swings a Pinterest pin. Overall, he does everything he possibly can. But of course, none of it works, because at this point, the only way for Ralph to truly overcome the consequences of his personal flaw is to actually fully once and for all overcome his personal flaw. And when that after all this time of refusal and denial finally happens, it really is a powerful moment. Yeah. Put him down and I'll go with you and we'll, we'll be best friends forever. <laughs> Just me and you. Well, that's not what I want. It's not right to hold a friend back from her dreams. You don't own her. Hey. He needs to let her go. It's gonna hurt a lot. But no matter where she goes or where she lives, she's always gonna be our friend. And we just gotta trust her. Cause that's what best friends do. After Ralph has accepted the pain of growth, the evil version of him is defeated. I'm not really a fan of how he just magically wins without actually having to externally do anything, but it does still function. Then, just to hammer it in, we get a couple more scenes to highlight how Ralph has become the opposite of the person he used to be. Whereas before he held on to Vanellope tight without letting go, now he actually encourages her to go and be where she belongs. As in, just like that, Ralph has clearly matured and changed as a person. Just just like that, the character arc of Ralph is complete. Saying that out loud, maybe I've been a bit of a dummy too. I was so obsessed with being this great entertainer and teacher for you that uh, I couldn't see how I became a bit toxic and arrogant about it. Truthfully, this isn't the most important movie video you'll ever see. It's a pretty good video, but you know, there are other good videos out there too. And uh, I'm okay with that. 
To put it shortly, here's how you effectively use character arcs in a movie. You start off by defining your protagonist with a passion that is so strong that it has become a flaw. A flaw that in some way sets the plot in motion. You then delve deeper into that flaw and where it comes from and initially have the protagonist refuse to overcome it, which makes things even worse. And finally, you have your protagonist battle the direct consequences of their flaw, only to defeat them by, once and for all, overcoming their personal flaw and truly changing as a person.